Hi, I'm Stormy Omardian, and this is my daughter-in-law, Paige Omardian. Hi, so glad to be here with you guys today. Well, 20 years ago, my book, The Power of a Praying Parent, came out. And since that time, we who were parents of young children are now parents of adult children. After my son graduated from high school and went off to college, I wrote the book, The Power of Praying for Your Adult Children, because I saw how we need to pray different prayers for the specific challenges they face. But there are some things that we continue to pray about no matter what age they are. For example, one of those is praying for our children to marry the right person. And I started praying about this from the day my children were born, and I never stopped praying about that until they were married. Next to their decision to receive the Lord, choosing who they will marry is the most important decision they will ever make. It will affect the rest of their lives. The wrong decision can not only bring misery for them, but for everyone concerned. And I prayed for them that God would send the right husband for my daughter and the right wife for my son. I prayed that they would understand the difference between simply falling in love and knowing for certain this is the person with whom God wants them to spend the rest of his or her life. I prayed the same prayers for my son as I did for my daughter, but for the purpose of what I'm about to tell you, I am just going to talk about my son. And I must tell you before I do that my daughter married a wonderful man a year ago and we couldn't be happier with her choice. And now, specifically for my son, I prayed that his wife would be a young woman who loved the Lord, had a godly character, with a gracious, kind, and giving nature, and be a person of purity. I prayed that God would protect her from harm, protect her from accidents, protect her from diseases, and every plan of evil. I prayed for my son to have wisdom about this crucial decision and that he would make the right choice. Proverbs 19.21 says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. And we prayed that the Lord's counsel to him would prevail. My husband and I continued to pray like this for years with no visible results. And I told my family members that I don't know how he will ever meet a girl. I jokingly said he doesn't go any place except his home and his recording studio, which is in his home. So his wife will either have to move in next door or suddenly appear in his studio. Well, both happened. <laughs> My son was hired to produce an album for a young woman, and at the same time, as she and her parents uh, were moving into town, they moved a few houses away from where Christopher lived without any of them realizing that's where Chris lived. And Christopher and Paige eventually fell in love, and we fell in love with her. And two years later, they were married, and she was everything we prayed she would be. It was miraculous. And now I have the privilege of introducing to you my answer to many years of prayer, my daughter-in-law, Paige O'Marnian. <laughs> Paige, I want you to tell your story, but I want you to start when you're about 10 years old okay. and just begin there and tell what was happening in your life at okay. that time. Okay. Well, thank you, Stormy. You're welcome. Well, at 10 years old, I was a very healthy and happy kid. My life consisted of homeschool, singing, acting, and dancing, which I began doing when I was about four years old. However, one day, my right leg started hurting. For months, doctors assured me and my parents that it was just growing pains. But as the pain continued to get worse, we knew there was something wrong. Finally, after a biopsy on my leg, we were given the news that would change our lives forever. I had bone cancer. It was Ewing sarcoma. As you can imagine, this came as an incredible shock to me and my family. One day, I was just this healthy little girl, and the next, I was thrown into chemotherapy treatments that made me horribly sick and left me bald. I also had to have surgery on my leg to replace five inches of the bone where the tumor was. 
This put me in a wheelchair. The hospital became my new home for about a year as I was too sick to leave for more than a few days. During this time, I, I cried out to God asking why this was happening to me. Though initially I thought God was punishing me, He began to show me that He was actually carrying me through this time. God had plans to bring about an amazing purpose through my pain. As I fought for each day, I saw that I had taken my life for granted in the past and I told the Lord that if He allowed me to live, I wouldn't waste the time that He gave me. After about a year of my battle, God healed me of cancer. He used this experience to awaken me to my purpose and to just how precious our life is. James 4.14 in scripture calls our life a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. For me, this realization changed everything. As I stepped back into normal life after cancer, I found that I now viewed things quite differently. I remember clearly one of the first days of seventh grade in my new school when the girls lined up at the bathroom mirror. As they reapplied lip gloss and fixed their hair, one of them shouted, I hate my hair. I just wish I could shave it all off. Well, my heart about stopped because I wanted to scream, excuse me, I just was bald and I guarantee you wouldn't want to try that. Mm -hmm. At the time, my own hair was about an inch long, but honestly, I was just happy to have hair. This was when I began to realize the mission God had given me to awaken my generation to a new perspective and to the exquisite purpose God has for their life. The Lord used my cancer to unleash His plans for me and to bring about so many blessings, one of which was being granted a wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation to professionally record some songs. And these songs opened doors for me to sing and share my story all over the country. In 2007, God moved me and my parents to Nashville, Tennessee, where He opened doors for me to sign with a record label, release my debut rock album titled Wake Up, and tour as the main speaker for a budding ministry. Last year, God allowed a longtime dream of mine to come true as my first book, Wake Up Generation, was released. But the very greatest blessing of all was getting to meet and marry my amazing husband, Chris. As Stormy said, not only did Chris have, or, I'm sorry, not only did God have us meet through working together, but he moved my parents and I practically next door to him. Chris and my story is definitely written by God because everything about it was unexpected. When my record was finished, he and I realized that we no longer had a reason to see each other, and we wanted one. We both had to pray hard about whether or not to even step foot on a first date, because neither of us wanted to get involved unless we felt there was potential for marriage. In our dating process, God took two very opposite people, refined us both by the character of one another, and melded us into the man and woman who were perfect for each other. It was only through our times in prayer together and apart that we became certain that God had destined us to be married. The Lord literally showed us our wedding date, which was to be 11-11-11. Not only did I get to marry the man I had always prayed for, but God blessed me with a family-in-law that is far beyond what I ever could have dreamed. I hope I were not the family-in-law from hell. I'm so oh, good. no! <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> She's been such a blessing to our whole family. We all adore her. And the night before Chris and Paige's wedding, we were at the rehearsal dinner, and I, w I was looking at Paige and, and um, how beautiful she looked and how happy she looked. And I, I was thanking God for her, and God impressed upon my heart that when Paige was in that battle for her life with cancer, I was praying for her every day to be protected and healthy. And it really struck me that we were connected, you know, way before we ever met, you know, because of all those years of praying faithfully for her. And I, we tell you the story uh, and our stories to encourage you to keep praying for your adult children because you have no idea what God is doing in their lives in response to your prayers. And sometimes we pray and pray and pray and it seems so long in coming. You know, but you know, when, when there are 
adult children, we no longer have any control over our children, our adult children. We, we can't make them do what we want, you know, but by praying, we can help them to hear from God so he can lead them to do what he wants. We want you to remember that, that God answers prayer. And we're so grateful when we don't give up and see God, the answers come to, to fruition. Thank you. Thank you.